and in Nottingham there are masses of shops and there's all sorts of different places that you can go. I live in the city centre. I thought today I would go round, I would explore a bit more, have a little look into some of the places that I haven't been before. One of those being the Lace Market District which I went to and I actually found a huge water stones on the way that I didn't even know there was a water stones in Nottingham which is like four floors and the sci-fi and fantasy section is huge so that is wonderful and oh my goodness I just I was in heaven and I wandered around there for a while but I didn't buy anything from there I did restrain myself because I'm trying to spend on books that are only in charity shops and really cheap shops at the moment so that I can save myself money but still get books. I found quite a few charity shops, I found a little bookshop that I'd never been to before which is kind of hidden behind a CD shop and they do books and I found quite a lot of books in there so I'm going to show you guys what I found. So the first three books that I found are actually these ones. They are The Farseer Trilogy which is by Robin Hobb. I haven't read any Robin Hobb books but I now own quite a lot of her books and I definitely want to read them because I know she's meant to be such an amazing writer. Now they're the right way around. Now that I've got these I can definitely get started on them. They look quite chunky. The first one is The Assassin's Apprentice. This is book one in the Farseer trilogy. Just under 500 pages long. So this one sounds really exciting. So I'm guessing from the title that it is about an Assassin's Apprentice and the blurb says that it's about a boy named Fitz who has been cast out of his family. He's a royal bastard so he's cast out to live on his own and he has an affinity, a magical affinity with animals which is his only companionship. He only has animals as friends. He doesn't really have any other people to talk to. He gets adopted into the royal household and there he has to learn all sorts of new skills and I assume that some sort of assassination kind of apprenticeship comes out of that somehow but I don't really know how so I'm definitely intrigued to find out. I know that this has got really amazing reviews. So many people love this series so I'm definitely really eager to get started. I do like the cover even though I don't really like these little people up here. They're a bit random. I do like the sort of middle ages feel to it which is quite nice and the writing of her name is really lovely typography so definitely it's beautiful. It says on the back that it is a glorious classic fantasy combining the magic of Ursula Le Guin's The Wizard of Earthsea with the epic mastery of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. So I read The Hobbit last year and I loved it, so I love Tolkien's writing, so definitely if it's anything to do with his style then I would definitely enjoy it. Ursula Le Guin I've heard a lot of really good things about, though I haven't read any of her books myself. The Royal Assassin, and this one comes in at around about 750 odd pages, so this one's quite long but definitely it looks really cool. There's like a wolf howling on the back so that's quite interesting. And then the final one in the trilogy is Assassin's Quest. This one's the third one and it is over 800 pages so this one's quite a monster. So definitely excited to get onto this. Again the artwork on the front is really beautiful so that's nice. So I got all of these for £1.50 each which is wonderful. It came to like £4 something for these three books which are all pretty massive books so yeah, definitely it's worth checking out charity shops for books because they do sometimes have some hidden gems. The next book that I got is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle. I don't really know anything about this but I have got her other book, Bring Up the Bodies. In Wolf Hall, one of our very best writers brings the opulent, brutal world of the Tudors to bloody, glittering life. Now, I have a real fascination with the Tudors and that period of history. It's one of the few periods of history that I actually know quite a lot about and I'm really interested. My sister is currently studying Tudor history, so I'm hoping that she will actually get some books to do that and then I can steal them later. But that would be good. I'm really interested to see how this goes. It's got low surprises and I always see it featured when I go into Waterstones and other bookshops, so it definitely sounds like it'll be a good read and I know that she's a very highly regarded author, so I'm definitely really intrigued about this. It's based on Thomas Cromwell and 
It's a fictional account of how he grows up and how he becomes Henry VIII's most powerful courtier. So it sounds really cool and it definitely sounds like it'll be fun. So I'm going to hopefully get to this sometime soon. So the next book that I have is Carrie and Comfort by Dan Simmons. This one I kind of don't really know very much about. I know that Dan Simmons is meant to be a good author. It says on the front that it is one of the greatest horror novels of the 20th century and that is by Stephen King. So definitely it sounds like it will be good. It's again a huge book. This one has like 800 pages but look how tiny the type is. It is absolutely minuscule. So... I think this will be a really long read when I actually get to it, but I'm definitely intrigued. A few individuals have the ability, the psychic power to influence the minds of others. Each year they meet to discuss their ongoing campaign of debauchery and slaughter. So it sounds really weird, it sounds like it will definitely be interesting, it says that it spans a multitude of different centuries. So the next book that I have is actually a really tiny one. This one is The Colour of Magic, which is by Terry Pratchett. I have been wanting to get into this series for quite a while. It is the Discworld series, and I saw a video on Books and Pieces channel, I will link her down below, where she talked all about Terry Pratchett, not just about this series, but about the other books that he's written, and just generally gave us a lot more information about him as an author, and that really inspired me to actually go out and look for this book. And I did find it in a charity shop. I got it for a pound, so that's really good. Um, it is quite coloured, but I don't mind that at all on my books. So as long as they're in decent condition, I'm quite happy with them. It's just over 200 pages. The writing's quite a normal size. But they just sound really fun. Like, I wasn't sure where to start the series. And she said in her video that you should just read the entire thing. It's currently 40 books long, I believe. And... This is the first one, so I'm definitely excited. I think they're quite funny and quite entertaining and just a really lovely world that they're set in. It's all about this world which is on the back of a giant turtle. Sex unknown. So it sounds really fun and exciting, so I definitely want to give this a go. The last book that I got is by Sarah Waters and this is Fingersmith. This is the edition that I really like the cover of. I got it for £2. It was shortlisted for the Man Booker and the Orange Prize, so that's really good. I know that Mercedes really likes this. I'll link her channel, Mercy's Bookish Musings, down below. And she said that she loves this book. I think she read it last year, and I am really intrigued because she seems to always talk about it, and I definitely want to pick it up and give it a go. So now that I have got it, no excuse not to, so yeah, I'm definitely excited for this one. It's set in London in 1862. It's about a girl called Sue Trinder who is orphaned and she grows up in a band of thieves and it's about her life and how it is actually linked to the fate of another orphan who she doesn't know anything about but who is growing up in a gloomy mansion not too far away, so... It sounds like it's really interesting, and I like the cover, and I'm just really excited. Again, this is quite a big book. It's 548 pages, so that's quite good. That's like my average read nowadays. Most of my books seem to be about 500 odd pages, which is quite a lot, but I really like big books, so yeah, that's exciting. So these are all of the books that I got, and... I am really excited to give them all a go. Let me know if there's any of them that you really want me to get to first. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you all again soon. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little